Hi, it's Kelsey Fry here for MUATV.com. We're still on Spotlight on Success, and we're here with Emily Kate Warren. Hi. Hello. I really enjoyed watching your demo that uh, you did this evening for us. Oh, it was beautiful, thanks. beautiful lip color. Yeah. And it was really nice. How'd you feel? I felt actually really good about it. And usually I would do makeup and look into the mirror, as mm -hmm. most people would, but it was kind of not possible with the mirror, but when I whenever she was finished, I was like, oh. That's good. I mean, we are kind of used to using a mirror because we like yeah. that to look at the reflection for the balance, yeah. you know. So it is a it is a little bit more complicated when yeah. you're doing just a demo to the camera. But but it's more real, like especially during Fashion Week and stuff. There's even though they have mirrors there, I can never see. Well, I'm actually not an I'm not with an agency. I'm a, my own free agent. Oh, your own free agent. Okay, um, so I'm sorry. I just I the a lot of agents from other agencies will still book me for jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not signed with anybody. You're not signed. Are yeah. you, uh, do you understand how that process goes? Can you yes. share a little bit of what you know? with? Yes. Um, for me personally, because I sort of went backwards mm -hmm. with my career, I mean I've always done makeup, you know, probably had the same story as everybody else. Started doing it when I was really young. Um, mm -hmm. It just sort of kept finding me and I really enjoyed doing it. Growing up in Texas I never realized it would be, you know, a real paying career that I could make money doing. Um, so I just kind of tucked it away and went to college, studied other things. Um, what did you study in college? Fashion design. Fashion design. Yeah. What college did you go to? Uh, I went to LSU, go Tigers, mm -hmm. <laughs> in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And um, so what ended up happening was I went down the publishing route and I actually worked as an, um, a beauty editor for about five years, worked for three different magazines. And I was on the flip side of all of this, mm -hmm. all so the while. So you worked for the O magazine. I worked for O the Oprah magazine. Right. Um, I interned at Latina magazine. I worked um, most of my stint as an editor was at Cosmo Girl magazine, which sadly folded October mm. 10th. I'm Very so sad. I hear that. I was so sad. Uh, it was a was great that related magazine. to Co uh, yeah. Cosmopolitan? Yeah. So, so you worked in the publishing area. I worked in that area. I was writing beauty and editing, covering the market, everything that mm -hmm. was new. You know, magazines are several months lead time, mm -hmm. three or four months ahead. So we would get all the products sent to us. Um, we would examine everything and decide what the trends were in the market. We would be at the fashion shows backstage, mm -hmm. um, observing what the makeup artists were doing um, for the now, season. Explain to me a little bit. I find that really interesting. So if you're edit, uh, beauty editing a magazine and you're representing the trends and the products yeah. and they send you uh, these Christmas boxes of products. Oh yeah! It must be uh, a fervor in the office when it the box is. comes. Everybody's coming to you, going, "What's new? What's new?" Yeah. And it's an explosion. I mean, it is. An explosion. I know as a makeup artist, when I'm given products, I'm very yeah. excited. What's What's that like? Just to go it's through ridiculous. the ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you know, products. There's so much product. Even when what we would do is we would literally load. I mean, every every magazine has a closet. Some of them are larger than others. Mm -hmm. You know, ours was like the size of this room, and it was wow. floor to ceiling stacked with everything you could ever imagine under wow. the sun. And believe it or not, you know, we would have beauty sales that would benefit charity. Because at the end of the day, you would literally either throw it away, or we would sell it. Right, because it has a shelf life, so you really have <laughs> right. to kind of, you know, push it right. through somewhere. If you're not using it, then right. it is better to donate it and uh, right. use it for charity. But what was that like? Well, when you would set up the table and products would come in, what? Are you actually doing? Are you taking things home and trying them? Yes. Are you looking at packaging? Are you picking colors um, that testing them on, you know, friends, testing mm -hmm. them on ourselves. If we were writing a story about concealer, we would pass them out to other people at the magazine. What do you think of this one? What about mm -hmm. this consistency? This one wore off three hours. It's supposed to be long lasting. Mm -hmm. So we I mean I really was it was my dream job at the time because I was still getting to do makeup. Mm -hmm. And I would do all the makeup for the editors for events, so I would do the editor-in-chief's makeup. If we mm -hmm. had a celebrity who came in the office and they needed a touch-up, I could do their makeup. I was still getting to do what I wanted so to do. So your hands were still dipping into yes. the actual application. Yeah. About, so you got involved in the beauty yes. editing, so that was exciting. You got to practice with the products, Yes. and then you would write articles. Write and articles. so you got to kind of dabble your hands yep. with, with the editors-in-chief and celebrities. When did you, I, I read in your bio that you were influenced uh, by your grandmother's paintings. Oh, yeah, So yeah. that's kind of how you got your first taste of kind of paints and Everything. canvas and then human flesh and then makeup. Yeah. 
Well, my grandmother was, she's the bomb. I mean, she's still around and she's so inspiring and awesome. And when we were little kids, she always had projects for us to do. Mm -hmm. And she loved to paint. So I would always, she was always painting portraits of us. Mm -hmm. And she's really very good. And so I remember once she enrolled me in a China painting class. So we were mm -hmm. painting, you know, roses on China or right. whatever. And um, she gave me a makeup brush to use as a paintbrush. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, like just whatever her free makeup. And so mm -hmm. then I would start going through her makeup drawers. And she always had the free samples from Clinique. And my cousin was there. And, you know, before you knew it, it was like, this is what I was doing all the time. And I think the story is probably the same like, like most. I would have my friends over right. on Friday nights when we couldn't drive and we couldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I would do like prom updos and makeup and mine was Mary Kay parties but that was oh, probably yeah, yeah. way before you were born when we oh would, no Mary Kay we did Mary Kay when we would sit around the uh, table and Mary Kay representative would come oh, yeah. and pop out the mirrors and everything and yep. then they hoped that you would buy, buy what they so had. much stuff and all the mothers would freak out going oh my gosh am I gonna spend fifty dollars on my child's makeup but yep so yeah I think we Same. all in some way or another shared the uh, makeup at home desire you know so totally. when did you um, decide to get, did you get formal training at all uh, in makeup um, in Texas? Actually, no, I didn't. I just always, i am always been someone who was never afraid of the challenge. So when I was working, um, sorry, when I was mm -hmm. studying at LSU, right. the sororities girls, I didn't know anybody at my school. I was only, I knew one other girl who went to school there and she was an athlete and so she was always busy. So the way that I made friends is I was like, I'll do your makeup before you go to a, an event, you know. So all the girls in the sororities would come to me to do makeup and hair. Mm -hmm. And then they were, so many of them, they started offering to pay me to do it. So I was like, well, that's, okay. That's lucrative. So mm -hmm. I would do like a hair and makeup, you know, for mm -hmm. like 40 bucks mm -hmm. or something. And I literally would do it for like eight hours sometimes mm -hmm. because I would go from house to house, like sorority wow, house to house. Wow, you were cashing in. I was, I was <laughs> not that much. I'm sure some didn't pay or whatever, but it really wasn't about the money. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make friends and I liked to experiment with different faces. So you were self-taught is kind of yeah, what you're telling me. Yeah, I was self-taught. Just kind of working your way through yeah, your friends and in and, and college. Friends and practicing. So you were self-taught. And when I came... When I was starting to work more, and I I've taken classes, you know, whenever there was a class to take. Right. Um, and I took. Was there any class? That, excuse me for yeah. interrupting. Was there a class that you particularly remember that you'd like to point out to um, the audience that you really I liked? I took a class actually. I took a class that when I got here, um, at the makeup designery mm -hmm. with John Bailey. He had done a um, a demo one day, and I was like, wow, I was like super inspired again. Mm -hmm. And then that got my wheels turning again, and I was like, you know, I really just need to get the guts up and just do it. I, see, you know, I interned at Art and Commerce, which is another really amazing mm -hmm. um, agency. Like they represent some of the best artists there are. Gucci Westman being one of them. Diane Kendall, like all mm -hmm. these people it used to have. They used to work with Tom for show. I don't know if they still do, but at any rate, really work with some great people. And I was interning there and filing their portfolios away um, in the summer one year. Oh, so you got to work in the agency and yeah, actually working on see the their portfolios side. and see people that you admired yeah. their work. and Oh, it was very, very inspiring. And I realized, wow, you can really make a great career doing this. Mm -hmm. You don't just have to, you know, pigeonhole yourself in doing just one thing. You can do all kinds of things. You can do mm -hmm. advertising. You can do private clients. You could do um, collaborating with makeup lines. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I thought, okay, I'm going to plant the seed working in the magazines collect more knowledge. It really was almost like more school, you know, because while I was at the magazine, I was learning tons about products, meeting lots of people. Um, and I love, it was like I said, it was like my dream job. I really enjoyed it. But I just finally said, you know what? I need to get the guts up and try this. And so my husband, very supportive. He was like, just go for it, go for it. Isn't that nice when people yeah. that love you say, just go for totally. it and they'll back you up? I think that's really it important. It was the best decision I ever made, for real. And I. Uh, I started a, actually I started a little freelance networking group here in the city. What's that called? We call it Free at Lance. Uh huh. That's cute. And, um, I like that. Free like at Free Lance. at Lance. Thank God Almighty, we're uh -huh. freelance. Freeatlance.com. Um, we don't have a website. Oh, so it's we're just real your own, casual. Just it's, your own private little group. It's a group. Anyone's welcome. Who but, are the members? Um, let's call out some of the Free my, at Lance. Let's uh, see. My friend Carrie Urban. She does hair and makeup. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Fleming. Um, she does makeup. Joy Finnell. She does makeup. 
My friend Makara Baker, she does makeup. Can um, you tell me just a little bit, because um, I know that we have to let you go soon. Yeah. Can you just touch on what Free at Lance oh, brings to you? I wanted to start the group because I was meeting a lot of other freelancers who did not have agencies. And I thought, you know, it's... I would actually love to have an agency at some point, but for now I don't, mm -hmm. and I'm getting many jobs. And my theory was, if I have a group of people that um, to support each other, you know, when the jobs are down or when you need to discuss, like for example, how much should I charge for this job? I don't know, mm -hmm. you know. And we found out we were all really charging either too high or too low, and we came up with rates in the middle between us that sort of made sense. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, if I'm doing hair and makeup, I'll charge this amount right. or whatever. So um, it was a nice support group for yeah. people in your group to kind of get together and bounce ideas and bounce yeah. negotiation and contracts. Commiserate and, and right. also to be joyful about what we're doing because yeah. it's the awesomest job ever. And, and there are moments when it can be yeah. a little downsided or by lonely, the economy. Or lonely because you're just by yourself. Right. You know, and, you know, there's so many times where you're just meeting only a, a group of people at a time, but it's what I missed about the nine to five was I didn't have anyone to say, like Makara is a really good friend of mine. We talk a lot about makeup, like, oh, today I worked with this guy, you wouldn't believe it, oh my God, he was so picky, I couldn't touch his face, blah, 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 Right. or whatever. And it's like, you know, you talk to your other friends about it that don't necessarily know that much about it, and honestly, it's, you know, it doesn't work the same. So we, this group is basically like support system slash we refer jobs to each other. We have writers in our group. We try to inspire each other and be really excited about what we're doing, you know? And I think that's really important to be yeah. able to have a, a strong support base, yeah. you know, in the freelance world. I mean, I certainly share that with, yeah. you know, my friends and my colleagues and associates in Los Angeles. Totally. Now, uh, you talked about that you're working in fashion here, but you have, I, I heard, in your voice a little bit that you're kind of intrigued about the film world so you yeah the reason I say that is some of the artists that we have interviewed you know they specifically you know because we're here to talk with print and fashion <laughs> you know makeup artists to kind of bring <coughs> that avenue to muatv.com but you're a little intrigued to, to work in some film and some yeah. television a little bit more do you think that you'll embark on uh, getting more of that do you yeah do you feel that you'll take maybe more training because I think film encompasses bruises and character and balding. I'm good at bruises. I did bruises and blood today, but, but uh -huh. more character stuff, I, I clearly would need more training. Right. Um, I think it's because it, it's, it's even if you're doing the simplest soap opera yes. or anything at all, you know, you always have something right. that you have to include in film you and know, television. Um, I would like to think that we're in the, the dawn of a new age to where we can do whatever we want, mm -hmm. you know, and sort of, I know that that's, you're bound by union rules and certain rules in other cases. Um, but that being said, you know, I don't like to be told that I have to make a decision uh -huh. <laughs> exactly one way or the other because, you know, I worked um, Fashion Week last year. There was an, I, I, I honestly, I don't remember her name. Um, because I only literally met her for like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, th I think she literally just goes by V. She's mm -hmm. an Academy Award winner. Oh, V. Uh, Neal. Yeah. Yeah, V. Neal. Yeah, She's yeah. like a friend of mine. She's the bomb. And she was. She has the V. Neal brushes. Yes, yes. I worked on Pirates of the Caribbean 1 and 2 she, with her. And she was, she's a friend. She was amazing. We worked side by side for Monique Lullier Fashion Show. Uh -huh. And she was there because she was like, I just wanted to work Fashion Week again. I remember. And her I was like, see, we can go back and we forth. We worked on the solo. We, it's interesting. We worked on a movie called The Soloist. And oh, yeah, yeah. I helped her in the background area. And we had a lot of um, people that were involved in the movie The Soloist. And she was talking about that she was just going to, you know, pull her by her bootstraps and go and do Fashion Week. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you she got was to there. Yeah, she was next to me in there, and I worked with her a couple of shows. Um, one Val Garland was king, and one mm -hmm. James Clayers was king, and um, she was there, and she was, I was like dying to talk more to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, we didn't have time because we were both shuttling around. Right. But it was funny. We were talking to each other like, she was like, oh, wow, we, now we got to do this, now we got to do this, you know, and I wanted to ask her like, tell me more about what you do. Well, I think if you come to Los Angeles, that won't know, be a problem to I hook up with her because, you know, V is... She really probably won't remember me, but I remember well, her. Well, you don't know that. You don't know that. She, I, mean, I liked... I told her I remembered her because her name was um, cool, and she said it, she 
adopted it when she was working with the rock bands back in the day. And yeah, I no. Like, um, she, I am so not cool. She was, I a, mean, she was a hip punkster. And V, I hope you don't mind that I'm sharing that with the <laughs> MUATV audience. But, you know, she uh, was a wild girl in her day. And she's a very inspiring artist. And I think that if you yeah. ever, you know, tripped over to Los Angeles, I'm sure you could. I might be giving you guys a. Yeah, I think you could. And, you know, she comes and does demonstrations over at the Joe Blasco Makeup Center West. And, you know, she yeah, has a I'd brush line. Say. But yeah, I even I, think that if you went to her site, yeah. I think it's vsbrushes.com, you could probably email her and yeah. a reminder. You know, she's a very approachable person. Yeah, she's yeah. great. I like, I mean, uh, to me, the biggest way that I've been able to get jobs is by networking and trying to remember people's names mm -hmm. really hard and be like, oh, who was that? And, you know, passing my card out to everyone that I see because it's mm -hmm. like at this moment, I mean. I think you have to, like I do nowadays at my age, you have to jot things red down. Red hair. <laughs> was wearing red glasses. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's fantastic that you yeah. uh, had that opportunity to kind of both of you share different aspects of your work yeah, together. Yeah. Now, um, I know that you we have to let you go, but yeah. um, uh, I want to thank you very much for coming. I see, you know, I just want to cover that you've had um, some really great celebrity clients, Jennifer Jason Lee, and you've worked with some great photographers and some events and clients. Is there Anything else that um, we can include um, in our interview that you would, you know, I, like to share? I mean, mostly I work, as I said, with magazines. I work um, often with um, like Fitness Magazine. I just recently worked with Family Circle. Um, I work with Allure. I'm working with Lucky on Friday. Um, I do a lot of like private events on the back. On the flip side, you know, beauty editors attend these events to hear about makeup launches or hair launches. So mm -hmm. I'll. I'll work with a client such as Pantene or something to make up their executives for whatever. Or we'll right. I just recently worked with Marion Ross, who is um, was Mrs. Cunningham mm -hmm. on Happy yeah. Days, uh -huh. um, and she's lovely. I um, bet she is. Yeah. She was. She's still acting and busy. And I did her makeup um, and hair for a satellite media tour for Vix. Mm -hmm. And um, so I mean, I'm just kind of all over the place. There's so many opportunities in New York. There's so many things to do. Well, things. you know, I think the key to that is that you never know in who you meet or what situation yeah. that you're doing what you're passionate about that sometimes that can turn a corner for us. Yep. I mean, we could say, oh, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that, but by the nature of just being able to do a lot of yeah. different things, you might being turn a corner. Being open to the opportunity. Yeah, you might be able to turn a corner that will change your life. I mean, because yeah. that's the wonderful thing about freelancing. You just don't know, you never know what will turn your life. And to that end, though, the one thing that I really have to say that I had to really teach myself was there's always another amazing opportunity. Don't beat yourself up if you're booked on tomorrow for a really dumb job that you are kicking yourself right. for taking because the biggest job in the world called you. Well, that happens like, no matter what. Right, and I'm like, you know, for me, it's more important to be ethically sound and you like have to a have the good ethics. person. That I'm not going to cancel my dumb job tomorrow to do, you know, this big giant job. And I right. just remember, okay, karmically speaking, I know it's going to come back to me. You know, if you work hard. Also, I think you know, I will touch on that with you. You know, having uh, quite a few years of experience is, you know, it is important that people, as they're starting out, that they keep their ethics and their integrity yeah. intact. Because, you know, I used to, you know, I've taught for 20 years uh, with Joe Blasco, and uh, I would express to students somewhat that same thought, mm -hmm. because even though the low-paying job, um, maybe you're booked on and you don't pass up for maybe another high paying job, right. you're not sure what that experience will take you to and it could lead you to something tenfold over to where the one higher paying job could just be a one yep. incident situation. So exactly. I think it's more important to be, you know, intact with your integrity and intact with your ethics because right. that is going to give you longevity and of afraid, success. And and speaking of that too, like not afraid to ask for what you think you're worth for mm -hmm. a rate either. Let's, let's not forget it's business. Right, Show it's business. business. Yeah. This is Kelsey Fry for MUATV.com. Thank you, Emily Kate Warren. We appreciate you being here for Spotlight on Success here in New York City.